G'day everyone. I uh, had a lot of people ask me because the A9 now has become so popular due to the fact that it's uh, dropped down in price uh, compared to what it was when it's released, uh, what my menu settings are for my A9. So I thought I'd take you through that today. I'm not going to sort of discuss what each setting does, but I, I will sort of talk about what I've changed and things like that. There are many manuals that you can download to have a look at what the, each menu function does. Uh, and we'd be here all day if I was going to go through each one. But I may talk about some settings that I've changed and why I've done that. So let's go through the settings anyway. Now, to talk about the... Um, a9 menus. Up the top you'll notice at the moment it's showing the red icon right at the top there with the number one on it. These are all the camera functions. Uh, when I say camera functions it's the still functions of the camera. The next one across is the um, video functions. Then we've got networking functions, uh, playback, then there's sort of custom functions uh, where you can set different aspects of the uh, camera like HDMI settings and things like that. Then we've got favorite menus at the back as well. So we'll look at all of these. Now if we go back to uh, number one, uh, you'll notice too that there's 14. So it says one of 14. So there's 14 sort of pages inside this stills area of the uh, menus uh, that are there. So let's go through them individually anyway. So I've changed my file format to RAW plus JPEG. So you'll notice you've got RAW, you've got uh, RAW plus JPEG and JPEG. Uh, I like to use uh, RAW plus JPEG because I like to have a backup, but I don't need a RAW backup. I'm comfortable with having just a JPEG backup. That really is only there in case if I have an issue with the RAWs. So I've got a backup that's there. Plus remember with the A9 you have one fast card and one slower card. So I've separated them this way. The RAW is on your fast card and your JPEG is on the slower card. Uh, so that's the way that works. Uh, file format is compressed. I like to use compressed. Some people say you see artifacts and things like that, but I've never seen any. Um, so I'm always happy with using compressed and keep the file size as small as possible. Uh, so if you're not comfortable with that or you've noticed that you are getting compression artifacts and things like that, uh, you may want to go uncompressed. But like I said, I've never seen an issue with that at all. JPEG quality is extra fine. Let me just turn that volume down there. Uh, JPEG uh, quality is extra fine. I like to go with the, as the best quality that I can get on the JPEG format, just in case if I do have to use it. So you'll notice here that uh, there's fine, there's also standard. Uh, so I'm on extra fine. Uh, JPEG image size, you've got three of those. Now there is six megapixel, 10 megapixel, and 24 megapixel. Again, I like to have the maximum size that I can. So I've got uh, 24 megapixel uh, in that size there. Aspect ratio, uh, I do change this depending on how I'm shooting. If I am shooting only for video, I may change it to 16.9 because that's the uh, aspect ratio that you have for video. Uh, if you want to go one to one, that's great if you're doing something like um, Instagram, which is a square format usually. Uh, and it's great because then you don't have to visualize what it will be like because you see that cropping inside. Sometimes I also sell prints at one by one as well. So if I am uh, sort of doing a shoot where they want one by one, I can change that aspect ratio to one to one. Uh, otherwise it's on three to two, which gives you that eight by 12 aspect ratio. Uh, Super uh, 35, I do change this sometimes. For instance, if I'm using my um, APS-C lens, the 10 to 18 millimeter, uh, I would, and the problem is if I put that onto my camera, it would obviously degrade the um, resolution down. I think it goes to about 12 or 11 megapixels or something. I don't want it to do that because I can use that lens on full frame. So I turn that off when I put my 10 to 18 on and then I can use the lens without vignetting between 12 to 16 mil and it works great. So there's times where I do manually override that. If you leave it on auto, the second you put a Super 35 lens on your camera, it will change over to APS-C mode, but you've got to remember that that's also reducing your megapixels, uh, so you have to be uh, careful about that. Um, let's keep going. Uh, long exposure noise reduction I turn off. It's on by default, the same as high ISO. I turn that off by default. I don't want any of these to slow down my picture taking and that's what will happen. If you leave long uh, exposure noise reduction on and, and high ISO, that also uh, slows down your camera. I prefer to do all of this type of work in Photoshop or in Lightroom with plugins etc. Uh, so I turn all of that off. 
Color space, I have, uh, I think it's originally on sRGB. You can use Adobe RGB if you're printing yourself or if you're viewing this just on monitors because it's a much wider color gamut. Um, I use sRGB because that's what my printers, that when I get things printed, uh, would like sRGB. So I just use sRGB. Lens comp, uh, through there, uh, I think I only put distortion compensation on. Um, they're all uh, looking for errors like, you know, your chromatic aberrations, um, venetting and things like that, which will fix it up. Um, Self-timer, you can change the self-timer here. Uh, I usually do put it on five seconds because I think that's usually enough. Uh, and you can also do your multiple exposures if you're doing HDR through here as well. Uh, you can set up timers in here and you'll notice it's got three images, uh, five images, etc. So that's uh, using it for doing HDR uh, or bracketing. Bracketing settings as well, I haven't changed anything. So I'm not going to go through this because it's exactly as... Uh, it is by default. Interval shooting, again, that's where now uh, version 6, you've added your interval in there. Uh, I'm not going to go through this, but you can see at the moment with the base settings, it's on 1 minute 27 seconds. If you did change something, like if you change your interval here to up, you'll see that the time is now changing. It's now 3 minutes 52 uh, seconds. We now have the time lapse uh, as part of version 6 firmware. Uh, this is the number of shots that you'd like to do as well. Like I said, I haven't changed anything because I'm not talking about that. AE track sensitivity, I do leave on mid. Uh, you can change depending on high or low. It, it really just depends on uh, what you want to do. If you're shooting very high-end sports and things like that, you can have it on high. Um, I usually tend to just leave it on mid and it's fine for me. Um, like I said, if you do want to read about this, uh, you can download the manual from Sony itself. Um, shutter type, oh, this is where you can change it between mechanical and electronic. Um, I usually am using electronic most of the time. Um, that's for your interval though. Uh, I find if I'm doing the interval, I do want it to be electronic because I don't want to wear the shutter out. Um, so I will be using electronic there as well. Memories, this is where you can set your different memories or call up your memories that you've set. You have three that's on top of the camera and then you've got three sort of software ones which is M1, M2, M3, M4. I do use these um, for when I do movie uh, shooting and things like that. I've got custom settings set. Now I'm not certain since I've done the upgrade whether I've even put these back in or not. Uh, but I do usually set it so that I'll have, uh, for video usually, I'll have one set up for shooting 4K, uh, I'll have one set up for shooting slow motion, and I'll also have one set up for just shooting 1080p. Uh, so that's usually where I have those settings uh, put in. Regular custom uh, set, I don't use this, but look, it is, it is extremely handy, and I've seen a lot of people use it. Uh, I just use manual uh, exposure and stuff like that and I'm very, very quick to be able to change to what I need. But what this does, it, it can, you can say set up a uh, quick key or one of the, the, you know, your buttons like your C1, C2 or whatever you wanted to press uh, to change your whole settings on your camera. For instance, you might have one set up that is for shooting uh, for um, low light work, like if you're in a church. And then the second you go out and you need a very, uh, uh, like go onto aperture exposure or something like that, uh, you can set that as well. Now I'll show you what I mean because if I click inside here, you can then change all these. You can say shoot program mode. You could be changing from shooting manual to aperture exposure mode. Like I said, if you walked out from a church to get outside, you can change your drive mode, exposure compensation, ISO. There's a whole stack of features that you can set in there. Uh, like I said, I'm not really discussing stuff that I haven't changed. Uh, let's keep going over. Priority set AFS, I haven't changed. I've just kept that on um, balanced emphasis, the same as priority set in AFC. Focus area, that will just change depending on which one you've set uh, through here. So whichever one is uh, you've set on, uh, that will be shown in this focus area. Focus settings, I haven't changed. Focus area limit, I haven't changed, so I'm not going to go through that. Switch VHAF area, I haven't changed either, so I haven't altered those at all. AF illuminator is on auto. Uh, face IAF set, um, obviously I've just got that on on. Uh, you, this is where you will turn it over if you want to say grab animals, so that's where you change it there. Um, and at the moment I'm on humans. 
Uh, you've just got to be aware that that's where you'll change it. Now you also have to make sure if you do want to have animal IAF that you do say select animal IA display is being on. I think it is on by default. Um, and face detection is also on by default as well. That's your display that shows around the face. You can change the left and right eye select through this as well. Uh, that's how you select right and left eye. I usually just leave it on auto, but if you were, uh, say if it was grabbing the one eye, the wrong eye, you could switch between this to make it default to the right eye or default to the left eye. So that's where you do that. Track sensitivity, I just have that on standard. You can go to different things like responsive and locked on uh, if you want to. It just depends really on how you'd like to change things. Um, I nearly always just leave it on standard for myself and I never really have an issue with the A9. Um, but basically if you go on to locked on, it will really hold on to the, uh, the subject. Like if you didn't want it to make sure that uh, it, you know, say for instance, you were focusing on a bride, but then someone walked past that bride, it would grab that person walking past. If you have it on locked on, it won't change. Responsive, it does change very, very fast. So it just depends. So if you're really tracking something you wanted to track as fast as possible, you can put on responsive. Um, Aperture drive in AF I haven't changed. Uh, AF with shutter I've turned off because I'm using back button focus. Uh, so I have switched that off. That disables your shutter. Um, I just like to use back, uh, back button um, focus. Uh, Pre-AF I suggest you turn off because that can cause some issues as well. Uh, IF starts, uh, I can't get access to these anyway because I'm uh, connected. Some features aren't working because I'm connected with the HDMI directly in anyway uh, into the computer. AF area registration, I haven't changed anything on that. Uh, delete registered AF area, I haven't touched that either. AF area auto clear, uh, not touched. Display continuous uh, AF area is on because I like to see that um, display showing continuously. So, uh, I like to put circulate on this one, this circuit focus point, because what it does, it uh, if if you'll notice now that if you look at the red um, little cursor there, if I move this along, it will just keep circulating. Notice how it comes from left to right. If you haven't got that on, it will only go up to the edge. I like to circulate it. That's why I've got that there. Let's keep going. Micro adjust, don't touch. Focus frame color, this is fantastic. So this is where you change your focus color. You'll notice at the moment, if I come into here, it's in red. Well, that's a little bit hard to see, isn't it, against the Daleks? So let's come into here and change it to white. Much easier to see now. I think the white's great sometimes. Um, it depends. Uh, obviously, if you've got something like the A7 III, you can't change the color of this uh, little uh, focus point. Now I'm hoping that that changes uh, soon. Uh, at the moment all you've got if you look at it is it will be this which is the grey. Uh, and then let me pop out. You can see how hard that is to actually see. It's, it's a nightmare. Uh, it's fantastic being able to change that colour uh, to suit what you want to actually use and therefore you can see it. Now remember too that will only work if you're looking at it um, with the flexible spot. If I go back to say wide area um, and then get focus, you'll see that it'll just do your normal green uh, dancing focus points. So to get that color, uh, you just go to that flexible spot and then you'll see it'll be there and then you move it around with your joystick or your touch screen. I can't use the touch screen at the moment because like I said, I'm using HDMI directly to uh, the computer. So it sort of disables those features uh, but that was a great feature. Thank you so much for giving us that, Sony. Uh, exposure compensation, haven't changed. Uh, reset uh, EV comp, haven't changed. That's exactly as it is. ISO settings, this is where you can set what your ISO range limit is. Uh, you can say go up, I've set mine at the moment to 100 uh, as the minimum and obviously 8,000 as the um, maximum that you can shoot through. Um, ISO at the moment is on 320, so that's why it's showing what that is on at the moment. So what you do here, you work out what your most comfortable settings are, and then you can set that in there so that it won't go over that if you're dealing with using your auto ISO, and that can be quite handy. Metering mode, that will change just depending on whatever your metering mode is. At the moment, you can see it's on multi. Uh, face priority in multimeter is on, that's just standard. Spot metering point centered is standard. Um, I haven't changed anything here uh, either. 
Flash mode, fill flash, that's what I use uh, here. Um, you've got a stack of settings, depending on how you want to do, whether you want to have, say for instance, if you're doing light trails, you can have lights coming from behind or in front, uh, things like that. I'm just using fill flash. Flash compensation, that's where you can set if you're using um, external flashes or any flash and you want to change your exposure uh, compensation for your flash, basically, your flash exposure compensation. Um, exposure comp set, I use ambient and flash. Uh, that will sort of, um, it will do your ambient and change your flash exposure when you're adjusting your exposure compensation. If you go ambient only, it will only change the ambient light uh, wireless flash on because I'm using Profoto and you need that to be on if you're using wireless flash. Oops, um, let's keep going. White balance, that's where you can change your white balance, obviously. Um, I'm just using auto at the moment. Uh, priority set in auto white balance, I'm leaving that on standard. You can set that as uh, ambient or you can set it as white. So it just depends really on how you want to go. If you want the, the look of the uh, of your room to be to get rid of all the ambient sort of light, that warm lighting that's there, you can set it on to uh, automatic white balance and white. If, if you want to set it on ambience, it will keep that ambience in the room. Uh, so sometimes I do use that because if I am using automatic white balance, like I said, that can take away that beautiful, nice warm lighting that's there. So if I don't want it to do that, um, I can push it to there, which is keeping the ambient actually set there. Uh, automatic white balance will just do it automatically. DRO Auto HDR I turn off because I don't want uh, any issues with the camera. I, I'm comfortable. What that will do, it just tries to increase your dynamic range uh, of the file. But I'm happier usually exposing correct or underexposing and then bringing everything back in. Um, this will only affect the JPEG though, I think. I don't think it affects the uh, RAW file, but I turn it off. Uh, I like to be in full control of everything that's going uh, uh, here. Creative styles, um, that's just if you'd like to use Vivid and uh, Neutral and all these sort of funky creative styles, I never use them. Shutter A uh, automatic white balance lock is off. You can do it so if you wanted to turn that on or press it halfway down, you can have it so it automatically locks your white balance at that first point when you press the shutter. Focus magnifying time, I have at no limit. Initial focus magnifying, I set at one. Uh, what that means is if you go to manual focus, so if I change that setting on, the second that I put my lens into manual and turn the lens, you can see now how it blows the image up. Uh, so that's what that's for. Uh, and it's quite handy, like if you, double, if you click onto the center button, uh, of your wheel at the back, it even goes larger. Now that's great for doing your uh, focus checking. Uh, and I love that feature. So that's what that is. Let me just go back to auto. So that's what that setting is. Uh, AF magnification on, That's I was just showing that. Manual focus assist as well, that's all to do with that. Po peaking is off. Um, I don't really like that being on, but if you did want to turn that on, you can turn it on. Then if we go to manual focusing, I'll just put this back to manual again, um, and then come in, it should show, yep, yeah, that won't show, focus peaking won't show um, because it's uh, connected via HDMI onto my, directly into my computer, so I can't show you that, but focus peaking will uh, show you an outside key line of where what's in focus, so that's what that's actually for. Um, let's continue. Face registration. You can register faces. Um, like for instance, if I'm doing weddings, I will go new registration and then you just put it inside here, take a shot and that will remember that uh, face. And I usually do the bride and the groom on that and it works very well. Uh, and registration priority, you can set uh, which one, you, because you can register the number of faces and you can have say, it'll have one, two, three, four. You can then say which ones have priority. Now we're onto the movie format. Now exposure mode, can't look at. Um, these won't happen because I'm connected via HDMI. So if you're looking here, this is where you change your file format. Um, now at the moment I've got it on 4K and the settings inside here, I've got it on 25P and it's 100 megabits, uh, the file size. S and Q settings, uh, don't touch. Proxy recordings, don't touch. 
Um, AF drive speed, again, this is where you can say have fast, normal, and slow. Uh, just depends how quickly you'd like the drive to actually focus. Uh, you've got to be careful though on fast because it can pulse a little bit. Um, if it'll sort of go past and then come back and it, you can get pulsing in the background. I haven't found that with normal. Uh, slow is if you want to really get a smooth type of focus pulling in and that can be quite nice as well. I very rarely use fast though due to the fact that you can get that focus uh, pulling. AF track sensitivity, again you can have uh, standard or responsive. Uh, I've just got it on standard. Uh, auto slow shutter, uh, it's just on, I haven't changed anything. Initial focus magnification, I haven't changed. And audio recording is on. Um, audio recording level, I can't show you it on because it's connected to the computer. Audio recorder level is on, so it will show in the display if I went to video. Now I can't change this because if I do it, it, it for some reason it loses the signal. But it will show the audio recording down the bottom of the um, uh, viewfinder. So where it's sort of saying one one hundredth of a second, you get audio recording showing down there. Um, audio output timing, just live, I haven't changed anything. You can put wind noise reduction on there if you want to. I found it doesn't really make any difference at all. Marker displays, uh, you can have markers showing, like if you want to say, get your aspect ratios, you know, you could have, uh, when I'm doing uh, this aspect ratio, which is 235.1, uh, I do show that so it shows on my display. So that's quite handy as well. And there's stacks of different ones that you can set from here. Uh, so I do put that on. Um, Video light, I don't use that at all. Movie with record with the shutter button is on, so I do have that set to on. Um, shutter type, mechanical shutter. Um, like I said, that will depend on how you've set through here. Most of the time, I am using electronic though, um, but that's where you do you can just set that. It's also programmed onto my C3 button as well. Um, e front curtain shutter is on. They do say if you have issues with uh, flashes where you, you start to get issues with, you'll get banding and things like that, you can turn that off. Uh, I believe if you go over 1,000, one one thousandth of a second, uh, they recommend to turn it off. I've got pro photo stuff and I've never had an issue with it. I never have to turn it off. Uh, but if I've heard people with Godox saying they have issues if they don't turn that off. Uh, so it's just something that you've got to um, be aware of. Release without lens is enabled. That means that I can take the lens on if I want to do some of those funky effects where you take the lens off, lensing or whatever you call it. Uh, I can have the camera so it will work without the lens being on. Release without card. Um, I've actually got disabled because I don't want it to take photographs without a card in it. So I've turned that uh, off. Steady shot is on. Steady shot settings, if you do put a manual lens on, like when I was using some recently, you can go into here and then change for the focal length of the lens you're using. Uh, and you would obviously change that. So if it's a 50 mil, you would change in here and put 50 mil inside there. And that's telling the camera that you've got a manual 50 mil lens on there. Uh, I don't have any manual lenses, so I'm just leaving it on auto. Zoom settings, optical zoom, I can't change those at the moment. Uh, optical zoom I have on. Um, and I like that because you can zoom in on the camera. Display button, uh, I haven't changed. Finder rate, I did change that, I put high. You have got standard and you've also got high. I've kept that on high. Um, zebra settings, uh, I've got custom settings set on there because I do use um, Leeming LUTs and they tell you what settings to actually set on there. So you would have to look at what you want to set. This is where you can set where you want your zebras to show uh, in the video. Um, grid lines off, uh, exposure set guide is also off. Live view display setting is on. If you're doing flash in the studio, you would turn that off due to the fact that it would just be black if you're dealing with uh, using strobes. Shoot timing display, haven't changed, it's just on type one. Uh, continuous shooting length is on always display. Auto review is two seconds. I do like to quickly have a look to make sure I've got the right thing without trying to find and press the play button. Um, custom key settings in here. Uh, you can see how this is all set. Number one's just not as the default. Uh, at the top there I've got switch right left eye. That's on your um, custom button two. Uh, custom button three is AF on. 
Custom button four is shutter type and custom button five is touch operation. Uh, so they're the settings that I've got inside there. The next one across, which is on the rear dial, is number one is just your focus standard. Um, IAF is set there on the center button. Focus magnifier is set on the number three of the wheel. ISO is set number four and zoom is set down the bottom. Uh, the next one is up the top, which you've got white balance, which is on the custom button one and custom button two, there is a focus area. So you'll see if you're looking at this, if I come into it, uh, custom button one will give you your white balance. Uh, custom button two gives you your um, focus area. Uh, if I come down onto the wheel, uh, the FN button gives me obviously your uh, those modes that come up, your FN menu. If I click onto the right there, it's got your ISO. That's the white of your wheel. Play button will just obviously show play and the um, bin button gives me touch operation on or touch operation off. Custom key settings here, uh, they're just following my um, normal settings so that they'll follow the other, that's for video. Uh, they'll follow what I've set for camera. You can do separate settings for video and also for stills. Um, custom key to play, again, I've not changed anything. Uh, first, the function menu set is what I showed you with the FN button there. Uh, I've just got touch operation, focus area, audio signals, steady shot, uh, metering mode, flash mode, um, shoot mode, AF uh, track settings, uh, audio record level, so I can change the audio record level, creative styles, uh, that's your white balance, so I can change between that, ambient or standard, etc. and flash compensation are all on my function menu. Uh, mild dial settings, uh, I haven't changed. Uh, dial setup, haven't changed. TV, AV, TV, rotate, haven't changed. I haven't set anything in here at all. You've just got to remember too that if you want to use a touch function, uh, function of touch operation has to be turned on here. Uh, and there's another section where you'll turn something on as well. But touch function operation has to be turned on there. I can't show any of these at the moment because I'm um, directly connected via uh Via, uh, via um, HDMI into the computer. Movie button always, uh, that's you, just so when you hit the movie button you'll record movie. Lock operation parts, you can lock of your camera, I haven't touched it. Audio signals on for all. Um, then I've not changed anything inside the network section. And I haven't changed anything for playback either. Um, now let's look through here. Um, Again, I can't touch anything because I'm connected with HDMI. Uh, this is where you can set your finder color temperature if you wanted to change it, your viewfinder brightness. Uh, you can have sunny mode, etc., and things like that. Monitor brightness you can also change. Um, volume settings, uh, this is where you can change your volume settings as well. Haven't touched it. Um, delete, I haven't touched. Power save, haven't touched. Auto power off, I haven't changed anything on here at all. Touch operation has to be on if you are going to use the touch part of your... Um, monitor at the back and your touch panel you can change this to things like touch panel only or touch ipad only i've just kept this as touch pad panel plus pad uh, touch pad settings you can uh, change where the um, touch will be selected at the back for instance if you're having your nose that can cause an issue with your uh, screen at the back you can change this to just portion of your screen so that's one way that you can do that i just use the whole screen I haven't changed anything in here at all. Changed nothing there. I've changed nothing there either. That's obviously where you format. File series number, you can change that and reset it if you want to. Set file name. Uh, you could set your name in here as well, like to A9. I should do that actually again. I haven't done that since I've updated the firmware. Uh, you could have A9 or whatever you'd like to call it. It's the first three characters of, your, of the file name. Um, record media settings, uh, record prioritized media goes under slot one, that's the fastest slot. Um, recording mode, you, I've got sort of raw or JPEG, that will put the raw on the faster card JPEG onto the other second card, so that's how I've got that set there. Uh, auto switch media is off, I haven't got that on at all. Um, and it tells you down here, it shows you that slot one is doing raw plus movie, and then slot two is just JPEG. No, I haven't changed anything else in those other settings. 
uh, version, that's where you can check your uh, version settings for your firmware, which is version 6 at the moment. The lens version, which is for the uh, Sony 24GM, is version 0 0.1. Um, now my favorites menu, this is what I've got on my favorites menu, which is flash compensation. So I can just click into there immediately and then, you know, uh, change my flash compensation. That's very handy for if I'm using off camera flash. Electronic fr uh, front curtain shutter, I've put that on there, but I never use it. I really should replace that with something else because uh, I never have an issue with front curtain shutter. Uh, but it is there in case if I ever did use something like a Godox or something and I'm over one one thousandth of a second. Uh, and you have issues that you could turn that off. Live view settings, I use that all the time because if I am in the studio, uh, I will turn live view settings off. Now the great part then too is if you're having trouble focusing in a really low light environment, you can turn that off. Uh, because the difference is, is that if you're looking at it now, it's showing what's going on. Like if I look at here, you'll see that it's showing what my um, corrections are. Uh, or what I'm changing my shutter speed, you'll see how it goes darker. You know, if you're in a dark environment though, and I turn that live view settings off, uh, and then come back, see how much lighter it is now, which can help with your focus. So if you are doing having issues with focusing in a low light environment, if you turn that live set uh, live view display off, you will get a much better focusing, and it does help you. But you've just got to remember, you're not seeing what your image is giving you. That's the issue there. File format, it's, uh, I've just, uh, oh, well, S and Q settings, it does, I've put that in there in case if I did want to use S and Q to do some slow motion and things like that. Um, file format is 4K. I can change in there if I want to go to HD. Uh, touch operation, I can turn on and off. Uh, file format I've uh, put in there as well. Function of touch operation, I've put that in there in case if I do want to change between tracking, turn to turn tracking off or on. That's where I've done that. I've put find a monitor there as well, but in case if I'm using a monitor, I can switch, or if I'm using a gimbal and it keeps switching the back monitor off, I can turn it so it's just using the finder or the monitor. Steady shot in case if I'm sticking on a tripod and I want to turn steady shot off. Uh, they're all there, and that's how you add your out items in uh, there as well. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. Anyway, look, I just thought I'd share what my custom settings are, the settings that I've used, uh, just so you know what I've set my camera at. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to ask or whatever, put them down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, apart from that, guys, I'll see you all soon for the next video. Bye for now.